Hey guys, just quickly before we get into this video, I just wanted to explain something real quick. I know I did the, the poll on my channel asking what build you guys wanted to see, and Avatar of Lightning won. So I did try and film that series twice, and I just didn't really like how both of them were going. Uh, there wasn't any good roles, um, everything was just going wrong. Some of the footage corrupted in one of them, and that's why I restarted the first time. So yeah, that's why I'm not doing the Avatar of Lightning build right now. I don't have any more cards for it at the moment. I will farm them and I will do that build at some point, but I just can't do it right now because it was just going like awful. So we're doing something different today and I hope you guys are okay with that and I hope you guys enjoy it as much as you would the Avatar of Lightning series. But that's enough from me. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's get into it. Wrath is an ability that has been receiving a lot of love lately. It got the new Locust Hunter Ari. And it also got a new cat Ari, and that's what we're going to be exploring today. So this is going to be the newest series, and in this series we're taking on the Predator's Wrath Ari. This reads, your predatory strikes effect now lets you cast Wrath without leaving cat form. Wraths cast this way are unable to miss or crit, they restore 30 energy and 15% of your base mana, and gives you Predator's Wrath. Predator's Wrath causes all your cat abilities to deal additional nature damage. This effect lasts for six seconds. So this sounds like a really, really cool Ari to me. Just a cat launching off instant cast Wraths and stuff. So the way that this works, for anybody that doesn't know, there's a talent here called Predatory Strikes. This gives our Feral Finishing Moves a 7% chance per combo point to make your next Druid nature spell with a base casting time of less than 10 seconds become an instant cast. Healing Touch Juice this way heals for 25% less. So we make the Wrath an instant cast, basically, and it can just be launched out from a cat. <laughs> so our start today is going to be Charge, because we need a Gap Closer. Healing Touch, because that can also be used with Predatory Strikes, and it's really good for instant cast healing as a cat. Wrath, obviously, because we need to launch the instant cast Wraths off. And Evasion, because Evasion is an insanely good CD for a cat. So yeah, that's what we're doing today. We've got two specs as usual. I always do this, but just to show you. Does this guy seriously have a Walrus as a Hunter pet, or is that a... Is that a hunter pet? I, I want that, if that is a hunter pet, but I... But yeah, there we go. Both specs. Skill cards wise, we obviously went with cat form because, you know, we, we're playing the cat build. And we also went with poisons because poisons is the best weapon enchant for cats. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'd say it's time that we get questing. We're obviously going to be leveling as a wrath build up until we get cat form. As soon as we get cat form, we're just going to switch and we'll probably even just auto attack because auto attacking with poisons as a cat is pretty good because the attack speed is so fast. There is also another legendary RE for cats that's to do with claw and rip, which I'd be interested to try out in the future as well. But I don't know if it's any good. I have no idea if this is good. This RE could be utter crap and I don't know, but I like to explore stuff for myself and it means that you guys can see somebody's genuine opinion on the RE and how it plays so you guys can make an informed decision for your for yourselves whether or not you want to make the build or try it out for yourselves so yeah this could be the worst cat re that there is but i want to try it out see what my opinion is and what the damage is like with it i was thinking about getting poisons in fact and going for spell power cat with mental quickness but i kind of decided against it and just wanted to go poisons because i thought stacking nature damage could also be pretty good and we're pretty much just going to be a normal cat apart from you know launching instant cast wraths so so things that i'm hoping for early on are things like uh mark of the wild would be really good for this build i think there's not much else really sprint battle shout but there's not much that's actually good for this build as it is a cat and all of our good abilities come <clears throat> after 20 so ideally at 10, 12, 14, and 16, we would get Mark of the Wild, Battle Shout, Sprint, and Blessing of Might, I guess, would be my ideal set of abilities. Maybe Regrowth, because Regrowth can also be used as an instant cost with Predator's Wrath. It's, been, it's actually been quite a while since I've done a cat form build. My last one was Ocelot on um, Season 6, and that was an insanely good cat build. That was a lot of fun. I did lots of arenas and PvP on that build, and I had a lot of fun with it. So I hope that we can get something close to as good as that. Because I've had lots of cat rolls that weren't very good. And this is an example of a starting bad roll. Curse of Agony, Jesus Christ. 
That's not good at all. I'm actually just going to head over to Ratchet now. I know we follow the same route every time uh, when I level, but, you know, it's a good route, so why veer away from it? If it's quick, effective, and pretty damn easy, then, you know, you might as well just follow it. So I'm going to make my way to Ratchet now, and I'll see you guys once we're doing those quests and hitting level 12. The boat just left. You bitch, how could you leave me behind? You knew I was coming here. So it is now time to move on to today's daily RE. And today I am working on hunters. And that is because I have an interesting hunter build coming up soon. And I wanted an RE that would work with it. So this is what I thought of. I know I'm gonna, not going to have this RE by the time I make the build. But I think this is really cool. And this RE is called Magic is for the Weak. It's a legendary. You renounce the use of magic schools whilst using ranged hunter abilities, increasing physical damage done by 5%. Your arcane shot is transformed into mortal shot. Your serpent sting is transformed into flayed shot. And now these are pretty much just simple uh, copies of arcane shot and serpent sting. So mortal shot, fire a powerful shot at your target, dealing X physical damage. 6 second CD scales with arcane shot. And flayed shot, launch a serrated shot at the target, dealing X physical damage over 15 seconds. Chimera shot hemorrhages the target's wounds. Dealing 40% of Flayed Shot's damage instantly scales with Serpent Sting. So this is just an idea for a full physical damage hunter. I, I know you can kind of do that at the moment with Steady Shot, but I just wanted to take it one step further. Add a physical damage dot and a physical damage instant cast as, along with Aim Shot. And yeah, this is just a, a pretty cool hunter, Ari, I think. Hunters have been getting a lot of love lately, and I know that. But it's because they're fun builds to play, and I would love to see this Ari actually in the game. So now let's move on to the YouTube comments daily RE. And today we are giving a bit more love to healers. And the suggestion is from AW Rabbit. And his RE is called Overflowing Light. Epic or legendary? Holy Light and Flash of Light now cast a Holy Nova, if known, and healing only, at the healed target when it critically hits. This critically triggered Holy Nova can or cannot critically hit depending on the epic or legendary quality. So I really like this RE. I would make it an epic, I think. I think it. Would, I, I don't think it's good enough to be a legendary. So for me, it would read Holy Light and Flash of Light now cast a Holy Nova, if known, and healing only, at the healed target on a critical hit, and just leave it at that. Doesn't matter if it can crit or not, I don't think. So yeah, pretty simple, pretty nice healing RE. I think it would be, I think it would work well as an epic. But yeah. So that's today's Daily RE. Congratulations to AW Rabbit for being featured today. If you guys want to be featured on the Daily RE, leave a comment down below with your suggestion for an RE and maybe you will get selected tomorrow. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Let's carry on with the video. I'm going to go risky today. I'm going to go all the way to 20 without switching specs. I want to see what happens. I'm probably going to end up regretting it and get like auto shot, arcane shot, concussive shot, just turn into full hunter. And then I could, I, actually, maybe that wouldn't be too bad. And then I could go, uh, like, that cat hunter thing that you can do. Um, one with the hunt, I believe it's called. Seems like there's somebody else here, but we don't mind too much. Holy shit, this is a lot easier than the last time I came here with the bleed build. Let's actually invite this guy. I think these two are in a group, but they won't invite me. There we go. Let's see what we get. Wow, we are really starting off strong today. Fucking hell. My breath is actually faster than the GCD at the moment, but I can't upgrade it yet. This is like a weird limbo that I'm kind of stuck in. Oh, this is interesting. There we go, there's 14. Holy light, okay. Not something at all that we need. But sure. It's 15, so we can equip our trinket now. Not that it does anything until we hit level 30 anyway, but still. Just for the feeling, you know? So I think with this, I'm going to be re-rolling at 32 for Ferocious Bite. Because I'm pretty, like, I'm 90% sure that we'll get Claw um, anyway. So we'll be, able to, we'll be open to Rip and Rake and stuff. But I really want Ferocious Bite. I just love doing the big bites. See what we get at 16. Hope you're for work. Disengage? Oh no, it can't be disengage yet. Disengage is a level 20 spell. So faint. I'm pretty sure that's yet another useless piece of shit ability. 
Causes no damage, reducing threat, making enemies less like if you're using a play, you get a buff, which causes the next melee. Okay, that may not be too bad, but I don't know if it can be used in form, so we'll have to find that out. I'm now going to go back to Booty Bay and make my way to Gadget's End. I'm now going to go back to Booty Bay and make my way to Lakeshire, so I'll see you guys once we're back up in Lakeshire. There's the perfect hotspot up for us right now, so we're going to make our way over there. Really, you can't jump on that? <laughs> Or am I just an idiot? We can actually get to like 24, maybe even 26 from this hotspot. So almost 10 levels. Which is uh, great for us. This is probably the best hotspot that we could have hoped for in Lake uh, in Red Ridge. There we go. Now I'm in the hotspot, I can kill you. Maybe not. There's one level. Next kill will give us either poisons or cat form. I'm not sure which one it's actually going to give us. It gave us poisons. Oh no, it gave us cat form. Okay. I just didn't get my, my stance bar coming up with the form. Nice. I'm actually going to stick with uh, wrath spamming for now just because I've got it talented and stuff and I want to make my way through this hotspot as fast as possible. I skipped the, uh, the blinding light of high risk for you this time, so don't worry about that. There's 22, which means that we get poisons. This is super easy leveling right now, I love it. Oh, and it's about to get a whole lot easier as well with another Wrath rank. 23. Okay, so we're hoping for Rake. Rake would be the ideal roll on next roll. Okay, let's see what we get at 24. Hey, we got Claw, I told you guys we'd get it. Oh, fuck. I, I haven't checked my spec yet. I haven't checked my second spec. Holy shit. We're going to have a whole mess of abilities. I hope we didn't roll anything bad. Ooh. Okay. So in this one, we got Rejuve and Survival Instincts. We didn't get Claw yet, but we got Survival Instincts. Victory Rush. Psychic Scream. That's not bad. Drain Life. Okay. That's pretty good. I mean, Survival Instincts is really nice. Not bad. I'll take it. Let's carry on. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do some cat form stuff. I should switch my main stat to Agi. And put on any Agi gear I can find. Wait, Beast Slaying Sword. I've never seen that. What the fuck? I've seriously never seen that. One great thing about leveling as a cat as well is you constantly have a 30% movement speed increase. So you, if you need to run from anything, it's really fucking easy. Like, I'm going to run from this mob because it doesn't give me any XP anymore. So there's no point in me attacking it. Oh, wait, we can start going into predatory strikes now. I thought it was a level 30 thing. We're going to go into that now, then. We don't have any finishes, which is something I should have thought about. But it's fine. And there we go. There's 26. Earthbind. Not very good. None of the benefits from Earthbind really affect cats, like... You can talent it to get out of roots. You can do that normally with cat form. You can slow people. You can do that with cat form. The only thing that it does do is root people, but I don't think we care too much about that, considering we have a lots of movement speed and stuff anyway. Oh, shit. <laughs> that was a slight accident. Let's go kill Belly Grub's fat ass, and then we'll go to Duskwood. I need to remember to talent into natural shapeshifter so that I can uh, shapeshift without spending too much mana. Early grub down. So you can't use fate in cat form. So that's actually not really worth it, I don't think. Here you go, Marty Jane Rose. Now I'm going to go to Duskwood and we'll do the walking quests until we get to level 32. And then once we get to 32, we'll go back to Booty Bay and... Get some rerolls going. Because I want to see if we can get Ferocious Bite. And then we can try out the RE at the end of this episode. I really like the fact that it restores energy and mana. And like, it can't crit. Which I feel like is like a fair balance. As you, it's restoring energy and mana. And it doesn't take you out of cat form. So just quickly before we go any further with the video. I just want to give a massive shout out. And a massive thank you to the man, the myth, the legend. The high risk farming god, Swordsy. Any of you who have watched my stream or watch Ark's stream um, will know of Swordsy's antics. Uh, he's insane at gathering gear and he loves giving it away. 
And last night he got me in Booty Bay and he said, I'm done with a couple of my builds, so I'm gonna give you the gear. So he ended up giving me a full set of Wrath gear, the DPS Wrath gear, all RE'd for Single Mind of Fury as he was playing Single Mind of Fury. So I've got the full Wrath set now, along with Kroll Shirok, Edge of Chaos, and Doom's Edge weapons, Girabashi Dwarf Destroyer. I'm now running Ambidextrous. I will make a video on this in the future. And just to show you guys how much of a difference this has made, I'm just going to go and do a DPS test real quick on a, on a dummy. So remember that I am in PvP gear, but I'm going to go on this heroic dummy and see what kind of DPS I can do. So as you can see on the heroic dummy, I'm holding 1.5k, which is pretty good for, you know, PvP gear. Now imagine if this was all, like, PvE powered and stuff i'd be doing a lot more and then as you can see on this uh training dummy the normal one we are just about to tip over onto 2k for some reason i can't quite get there <laughs> come on i was over 2k earlier i was holding 2.1 yesterday maybe i had a world buff but yeah you guys get the idea this build is skyrocketed now and there will be a video coming on this soon as well as the twilight paragon but Swordsy didn't just give me gear for this character. He also said that he had some caster gear available, so I came on to Crepuscular, the Twilight Paragon, and then he gave me this full set of caster gear, including Lokomir Ilramathis, which is probably one of the best caster weapons, Touch of Chaos, Shackles of the Unscarred, Mishundere, Ring of Spell Power, Soul Corruptor's Necklace, Talisman of Ephemeral Power, Ringo's Blizzard Boots, Warlord Silk Amis, General Silk Handguards, Empowered Legs, Bound of Servitude, Whispered... This will all be going to future characters and future builds, but there is one more giveaway item. So as well as the Vicious White Bone Steed, which we are all already giving away, I'm also going to be giving away this prestigious Warhorse. Those giveaways will be coming in future videos, so look out for those if you want a chance to win one of these horses. But yeah, thank you very, 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 very much, Swordsy, for all of the donations, and this will help me out a lot with my future characters that I plan on doing. Um, I've got lots of good stuff planned and this will help skyrocket those builds a lot faster. So thank you very much, man. I really, really do appreciate it. So there's a another hotspot here. So I think we're just gonna go to the other hotspot. I can't remember exactly where it is. I think it's one of the Worgen areas. I think it's the one with lots of shadow casters and ghosts and stuff in it. But that's a pretty decent hotspot, so we'll go there now, and we can do the quest whilst we're doing it. Yeah, so here we go. It's uh, the Worgen Orchard. There's somebody here. I don't know if we really want to PvP right now. I have no gear. Like, literally nothing. I'm pretty much in what I started in. I might actually stay here. Oh, no, but I want to reroll at 32. I, said, I was thinking I might want to stay here a bit longer, but I can't really if I want to go reroll. That's fine. We'll find another hotspot in STV or something at some at some point. We're not going to check at level 30. I know it will have been uh, two rolls. We'd, we might as well just wait until 32. If, the cool thing about this um, build as well is we can make our wrath scale off our attack power. Uh, with that, Ari, don't make me angry. And as we're a cat, we can stack high AP and make wrath hit pretty damn hard, I would say. There we go, level 30. Let's see what we get. Come on, please be like Rake or Rip. Piercing Hell? That is really not what we need. That's a shame. Not at all useful for us, and it takes up a talent point. We've been so lucky with hotspots today. Holy crap. This has made this so fast. Imagine if we'd had like a pot and an aura going right now. My god. Okay, I think this kill should get us to 32. I didn't realize that when I was in Booty Bay, I picked up the, what, the uh, world buff. The Anixia world buff. Is that overpower? What is it with me and overpower lately? Holy fuck. Let's see what we got on this one. Nothing else in Druid. Counterattack. That's shit. Prayer of healing. Kick. I mean, kick isn't too bad. It's not usable in form, which really sucks. But it's an interrupt and there is no shapeshift interrupts anymore. You can't use pummel in cat, bear, or metamorph anymore. So kick is probably the best thing that we could have gotten interrupt-wise. 
Either way, I'm going to make my way to Booty Bay now and we will go and do some rerolls and see if we can sort of turn this around. I'm surprised that Spec 2 hasn't rolled uh, Claw yet. All it's got is survival instincts for some reason. It's very weird. I bet you we'll get Claw on our first reroll. And on this one, I, I just have no words for this spec. Literally, the only roll that has been good was Claw. Just Claw. None of the others were good. And that's why we have this bar full. I can't believe we got overpower again. I don't know what's been happening lately, but I seem to be getting overpower everywhere. But I bet you the moment that I try and make one, an overpower build, it won't appear anywhere. Okay, let's do three rerolls on each spec and pray that something good comes from it. I mean, we have the chance to get Ferocious Spite. We have the chance to get Rip, Rake. We'll probably end up getting Swipe because I'm pretty sure Swipe is weighted. Okay, I'm not gonna get rid of Piercing Howl yet because it would open me up to a talented ability on my first roll. Actually, I could get Feral Charge. Fuck it, I'm gonna do it. Let's go ahead and reroll Piercing Hell. We're only doing one with a talent point open. Uh, beautiful rolls. Overpower, please leave. Please, just leave. Until I need you. Jesus, fuck me, dude. Let's get rid of Curse of Agony, because... I am in agony, and I want it to leave. Okay, we end up getting another cat ability. It wasn't really one that we really wanted, because we're not going to ever use it, really, which is Shred. Uh, I'm not going to use it because Mangle is just better for PvP, and Shred leveling is fucking AIDS, because you have to front stab everything. So, yeah. Let's switch over to Spec 2, see if this can get anything. Because I know we're going to get Claw on our first reroll. And then after that, I have no fucking clue. Okay. What are we getting rid of? I think we're getting rid of Prayer of Healing. I didn't pick up any of the rerolls yet. Okay. As I said, Prayer of Healing. Into Claw. I should be a psychic. I really should. Um, next up, we're gonna get rid of... Oh, fuck it, I forgot we have counterattack. Shit bollocks. Oh! Okay. Looking better than the other one. Looking a lot better than the other one. Okay. We will definitely take rip. That means we can actually try out the RE now. Let's get rid of uh, V-Rush. Actually, no, Drain Life, Drain Life. Come on. Now just give me Rake or Ferocious Bite on this last one, and then we'll be super happy. Okay, that that's fair enough. Okay, well, I'm going to fly up to the Rebel Camp and get some rips running so we can see how this RE looks and how it feels. It's going to be a lot better later on when we're being able to spam abilities. Mangle has such a small energy cost. Uh, compared to Claw. And we're going to have loads of energy regen as well. So we're going to be able to get our predatory strikes up a lot more. We have a lot of trash on this build. But at least we got a really solid defensive in survival instincts. Okay, let's get this RE running. Okay, I'm going to try and... Okay, we got a proc. Wrath. 30 energy and 46 mana. That's actually pretty nuts. So does it cost mana to use? Or is it free? Is what I wonder. Wrath. It hits for 300? What? That's actually pretty damn nutty. I, I really like this. This looks like it's going to be a lot of fun to play. And I forgot, like, it makes your, your cat abilities do nature damage. I want to be able to try that. Right now I'm just trying to bring this cat closer to another cat. There we go. So we got the proc. So we'll... Wrath. There we go. I think it was doing like 18 damage. Which isn't bad. Like that's a bit of extra damage. Yeah, 18 damage per hit. Wrath hits for 300. This is fun. I like this. I think this could be a decent RE. I don't know how it's going to perform at like max and stuff. Which is kind of where it matters. 
But yeah, this could be really cool. I want to do it once more, just before we end the video. Wait, can I get it with a three combo point? Oh, I got the luck. Ready? Aya! That's super cool, man. I really like that. I'm almost dead. Just because I've been trying to screw around with this for so much. Just because I've been trying to screw around with this so much. Okay then, guys, that's what we're going to leave this video for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this first episode in the Predator's Wrath series. I think this is a really cool RE. I like the idea of it, and it's doing pretty decent damage. And the energy, like, the energy regen is a lot better than I thought it would be. So this is uh, pretty damn cool. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, then hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more. And I hope to see you all in the next video.